Lam P. Sotep Kudro Ado L. Um, answering the unanswered questions. And I also want to say happy holiday for all the mornings. Good luck. So these dudes, I call them dudes, right? Um, GMS Times on YouTube. And they put out this video two weeks ago, June 18, 2014, called Caden Landmore's Unanswered Questions, right? And this came about just because this GMS Times individual wants to go back and forth on YouTube, comment crap, instead of doing like what I said, if you got a question, like everybody else, then send it in the inbox, I answer a question, no problem, right? So they put out this hour video about me not answering questions. So this is not even really the answer question. This is just because it's holy day and I ain't really doing nothing. And you guys have a video up there, you know what I mean? Smack talking. So I figure we put some information out for holy day. And you know what I'm saying? Keep the prophet alive and continue doing what more, what we as Moors, active, conscious, competent Moors, are supposed to do, right? Which is uplift all in humanity, and that's it. Ain't nothing else for us to, ain't nothing else, ain't nothing else for us to do but uplift all in humanity, right? So fallen humanity put out this video. So we're gonna uplift them today and see what happens. Because remember, right? Like. I'm not just doing this some props or something. Literally, I have nothing to do right now. I'm chilling. I figured I'd make a video. Since you guys can make videos, then yeah, I can make videos too. So let me make a video for you guys' video. Right? So we're going to start with Savior of Humanity. In this electrified age, men are racing into life without complete knowledge of where they are going or what the end will be. When riches seem to be their only pursuit to be obtained anyway and at any cost. When selfishness, avarice, greed, and lust dominate their very being. When humanity in general is left at the mercy of those who have no mercy in them. It is truly wonderful and astounding to see one come into this mad human drama for the sole purpose of saving humanity, losing all sight on those things worldly and yielding absolutely to a cause higher than has ever been attained. This picture is the likeness of Prophet Noble Drew Ali, who is serving humanity. So they talk nothing about religion, they talk about nothing about, you know, Moorish beliefs. Or, you know, something to do with Islam and Ramadan and whatever, right? Serving humanity, period, right? So, when you jokers are going to take um, the Prophet Noble Drew Ali, and you know do him like some type of rodeo clown clown vibe you're crazy right because noble jolly came to save humanity which includes you that want to pretend like noble jolly you know isn't the prophet right do i believe everything noble jolly said and not about belief it's common sense if you just look, read Savior of Humanity, in this electrifying age, right? In this electrifying age, 
This is 1920s he's talking about when there's no electrifying age going on, that's the industrial age. So if he's talking about electrified age and we're in that now, that proves he's a prophet. So chill with the this noble Juali, because you guys don't diss Garvey, you guys don't diss Elijah Muhammad, you don't diss anybody else, right? All you want to do is poke noble Juali like he's some dead carcass or something like that. And that's not what, what this is to Moors that are active, so you know. Active Moors just don't talk up because they got stuff to do. So like I said, I was chilling today. So we're going to make a video, right? We don't even read anymore of that. Just because you chumps, and this goes for all of everybody. This goes for everybody there who wants to, you know what I mean, stand on a street corner or whatever and use Bible as a reference, right? When you know, when you know that's modern. And then, and on top of that, it's a guy's version who's a homo. Of, of, of Bible, the, the, the Bible that people have in their hand, in their house, in their Bible, they get the dollar store or whatever. That they say, oh yeah, it's God's stuff. You can get that. You can get Book of the Dead and use that as your reference. But you're not going to use that. You guys, chemistologists, say, oh yeah, you love Kemet or whatever, you know, or Islam, Torah, and Nefer, Amen, because he reps it that hard. You know what I mean? Sticks with sticks with what foundation you're gonna strain running around or whatever right so you guys have this homo stuff so we're gonna just go through some stuff you know and remember it's not me right this is people out there who are into you know late or modern um, forms of knowledge right that have way more ancient scriptures, texts, etc. that you can get today, but they're not going to use that as a reference. They're going to use King James Version. Right? So Catherine D. Bowen, remember, this is not my stuff. <laughs> this is those people's stuff. Right? Catherine D. Bowen. Bowen. The Lion and the Throne, New York. Little Brown Company, 1990. Even the Stead Encyclopedia, 1911 edition, noted for its historical accuracy, put it discreetly. His undignified appearance was against him. So were his garrulity, his Scottish accent, his slovenliness, and his toleration of disorders in the court. But above all, his favor for handsome male favorites, whom he loaded with gifts and caressed with demonstrations of affection which laid him open to vile suspicions. It was expected of kings in those days to sire sons who could succeed them. James was married and sired eight children by his wife Anne of Denmark, although only three of them lived beyond infancy. Henry, Prince of Wales, King Charles I of England, Scotland and Ireland, and Elizabeth Stuart. This fact does not preclude his innocency of the charges of homosexuality. A number of contemporary persons have been outed, openly confessed, or caught who were married with children. One area of the life of King James that for many years remained clouded in controversy was allegations that James was homosexual. As James did father several children by Anne Denmark, it is actually more accurate to say that he was allegedly a bisexual. His relationship as a teenager with Esme Stewart, that's E-S-M-E, -S -E, so you can go check, S-T-U-A-R-T, -T, Earl of Lennox, was criticized by Scottish church leaders who were part of a conspiracy to keep the young king and French courtier apart, as the relationship was improper to say the least. Lennox facing threats of death was forced to leave Scotland. In the 1580s, in the 1580s, King James openly kissed Francis Stuart Hepburn. Francis, 
Stuart Hepburn, H-E-P-B-U-R-N, Earl of Brothwell, Bothwell, B-O-T-H-W-E-L-L. -L. Contemporary sources clearly hinted their relationship was a sexual one. It's your boy's stuff who you like, you like to quote and stuff like that. Right? The most oft-quoted advocate of King James' godliness and innocence is King James the Sixth of Scotland and First of England, unjustly accused by Steve A. Costin Sr. He claims to have found no absolute, absolute proof of James' homosexuality, yet he gives no indication of what would constitute proof. Today, one must catch a person in the act or have a video or something of that nature to provide incontrovertible proof of one's immoral activity. What proof could be brought forth that would stand in a modern court of law other than witnesses who spoke of it and suggestions of it in his own letters and personal testimony before the Privy Council? It advocates of James' virtues, use the king's own writing to elevate his morals. Others use it to confirm their claim of perversion. In King James and Letters of Homoerotic Desire, David Bergeron, B-E-R-G-E-R-O-N, shares excerpts of 75 letters between King James and his lovers turned up in recent years during his extensive research in the British Library the National Library of Scotland, and the Bodleian Library at Oxford, B-O-D-L-E-I-A-N, Bodleian, Bodleian Library at Oxford. He reveals the gripping biographical sketches of the King's sweetheart. One of the letters of James to George Villiers, the Duke of Buckingham, has this line. For protest to God, I rode this afternoon a great way in the park without speaking to anybody, and the tears trickling down my cheek, as now they do that I can scarcely see to write. <laughs> but alas, <laughs> what shall I do? <laughs> what shall I do at our party? On another occasion, he penned, "I'd rather live banished in any part of the earth with you than live a sorrowful widow's life without you." In other letters, the content was more saucy, to use Villiers' term. A good example is his own letter to the king. All the way hither I entertain myself, your unworthy servant, with, his, with this dispute, whether you love me now, better than at the time which I shall never forget at Farnham, where the bed's head could not be found between the master and his dog. <laughs> your majesty's most humble servant, and dog, Steve. <laughs> so that's the guy, right? That these guys are repping. Okay. The next thing that they're blabbering about is Canaanites, right? And you know, fraud of Canaanites or whatever, right? Now, remember that their perspective is coming from this guy, this homo guy. Right? <laughs> so, when you hear them talk about Canaanites being all these, you know, I mean, devilish stuff or whatever like that, all that is the, the number one plan, as usual, keep you away from your birthright. Why? Because everybody knows that a prophet was going to come, except these jokers, right, that call themselves conscious and they're in a conscious community and whatever, right? But they don't got birthright. When they ask nationality, they're not doing this, right? So we have to take these individuals, right, that choose. Because remember, up to now, I still haven't gotten a message from these guys, right? But they could put up a video, though, right? They could put up a video, but they're not going to just send. You could have asked all these 50 questions that you say you got in a message, and you got an answer, and, but no, nah, y'all want to do videos and stuff like that. Okay, let's do videos, right? 
Several archaeologists now maintain that the Israelites simply arose as a subculture with Canaanite society, that the Israelites were themselves Canaanites, and that historical Israel was a subset of Canaanite culture. Recent archaeological evidence supports such claims. For example, the hairstyle and the utensils of Canaanites and Hebrews were practically identical. Such evidence is to be taken into account too. Nomad bands settled in the Canaan area too. Some like Abraham came from the quote-unquote other side of the Euphrates or Jordan rivers and were blessed by Canaanite priests like the priest King Melchizedek. A new theory has it that tribes of serfs, slaves, and commoners abandoned all Canaanite states and eventually emerged in the central highland of ancient Canaan as a new people, the Israelites. <laughs> Such provocative new insights, right? So they want to be Hebrew Israelites, but they don't want to be Canaanites, right? So if the Canaanites are the devils, right? If the Canaanites are the devils, right? And they did all this demon and stuff. And then the Hebrews came out of the Canaanites. Then the Hebrews are devils too. So which one are you guys going to claim now? You going to claim to be Hebrews? Right? Because they're devilish too. Because the Hebrew Israelites came out of the Canaanites who were devilish people. Everybody curses and stuff like that. Right, the, the the repetitious curse for generations and generations. No, it's not a, it's not a curse, right? Because we're here, still here, fez is up, and we're not playing around with the, the this 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 because they don't need a Quintel Pro anymore because Quintel Pro is now mental. The Quintel Pro is not Quintel Pro, and all these freaking, um, you know, government agencies that were spying on people and whatever, all that's mental. All of that is mental, right? It's electrifying age. Remember, it's not the dub time anymore. Smart people time right now. Intelligent time right now. Competent time. And if you're not competent, stay in your lane. Don't come over here. Because there's monster trucks over here. Like, don't come over on this side with your your, your clown car, right? Because we run over stuff on this side. So either upgrade to a monster truck, right? Or either upgrade to a monster truck, because I still need to see some of you guys' Hebrew Israelite ID. Because Brother Abdullah asked y'all for it. Nobody never came up yet and said, yo, yeah, here's the ID, right? Right? But y'all repping it though. Okay, cool. We're not arguing that that's your nationality. You're Hebrew Israelite? Cool. Show me that. Prove that to me. I can prove you that I'm more right here. Moorish American, Aboriginal, Indigenous, you name it, Elodio, whatever, you name it. I can say that I have something to prove that I'm that. Documented hard fact. Where's you guys' stuff? Brother Abdullah asked you guys on Sanader's stuff. Not on his own thing, right? Sanader put out Brother Abdullah asking the Hebrew Israelites, where's your Hebrew nationality card at? If, if that's your nationality, your identity, show the stuff, right? We're parading around downtown standing on soapbox and all that stuff and you don't have a nationality. Let them play. Because you're no different than some circus guy with chalk drawing stuff, people thinking they're falling in holes when it's just chalk on the thing. Right? It was referred to the premier by a Hebrew Moor, Shalama Yisrael. Shalama said that the premier Moor that was us, we were the elite. We as Moors were rulers of the seven seas, and popes bowed respectfully to the Moorish rulers. The premier has proof of this. 
We do not call we did not call ourselves Boule, Alpha Men, or AKA. Yes, we respect them and always will, but we were called nobles with a noble birth. In addition, there is a book out of print called Certain People. If you Moors have a chance to read it, you will see so many parallels based on our teachings. It will change your it will change you overnight. They did not call themselves black or colored. They were unified based on economics and the knowledge being passed down. Moors were highly dignified and always spoke with the highest intelligence. Right? And that's from a Moor, right? CMB, Clock and Destiny. That's from a Moor who knew a Moor that was Hebrew Israelite. And his name was L, or his appellation was L, or his title was L. So there's one example of a so-called quote-unquote Hebrew Israelite that identifies himself as a Moor and doesn't run from it and run from Canaanites and run from, from Hittites and, and whatever else. Right? The true Jews are the Moorish Jews in history. The word Jew as it appears in the Bible is the short form of the word Judah, referencing the tribe of Judah, those of the Hebrew faith. The original tribe of Judah was of Negro stock and are descendants of Shem. This is where the word Jew, Jew appears in the Bible. It is not to be confused with Jewish people who are not the tribe of Judah, but are largely Ashkenazi, German descendants of Japheth, one of the three sons of Noah, who practiced the religion of Judaism, which is not the same as the original Hebrew faith. So, to give you that one, because, yeah, Hebrew, that's our stuff. No problem, rep that. Well, you can't be Hebrew because Hebrew is a faith. How are you going to say you're Hebrew Israelite? No, hold on a second. So Hebrew is a faith. So you're saying that your identity is a faith. If your identity is a faith, then that means you're running a fraud. Because there is something called the nation of Islam. But not every nation of Islam is part of that or organization. Not every nation of Islam in the world is part of the organization called Nation of Islam. If they're a nation of Islam, then every nation of Islam should be part of that. So you can't identify yourself as a faith. So you can't say you're Hebrew Israelite, because Hebrew is a faith. So if you say your nationality and you say Hebrew Israelite, they got the coffins, they show you all the coffins that they're lining up all over the place. Now you're playing around when you're Moors. And then it's talking about the tribe of Judah, right? So why did Judah come up? Judah comes up because these guys, once again, like to make videos, right? Instead of, you know what I mean, recognizing what's good. What's good is that the Moors are back. All you guys' stuff is dead because everybody's claiming their birthright. Right? Pilar L. Day claimed the birthright. NFL players claimed their birthright. Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon played the birthright. Right? So everybody is playing birthrights right now. The only people not playing birthrights is these other jokers trying to get the, the rest of the, the sheeple to go fraud under them instead of being fraud under the U.S. democracy, which they're down with the U.S. democracy, so they're still fraud with the U.S. democracy, even if they're down with them. And them meaning anybody who's in the so-called quote-unquote conscious community or whatever, calling for, you know, unity amongst the whatever, yeah, you know, let's just bring it all together. Okay, what's everybody's nationality? Well, we're African, whatever, and we're, what? sorry, we can't have unity like that. Because all you guys call yourself different stuff. We're saying, this is who we are. 
We're more. Where's your ID say that you're pemetologist or whatever? Your pemet name. Pata or whatever? Where's your ID that says that? Oh, Rastafarian, Bobo Priest, whatever. Okay, where's your ID that says that you're Bobo Priest, whatever that? You show when you have some type of situation with these people. But if you don't have anything to show to say that that's your identity, don't talk about that's your identity. Because it's not. If you can't shoot, prove something, right? If you can't prove something, then it's more than likely it's a lie. Right? I'm proving you identity. Right? Other Moors could prove the identity. But when you ask all these people what their identity, they're skipping around about all oh, their this, their that, throwing up fake flags, saying that, yeah, that's the real flag. When, what are you talking about? Because some, some, some organization, association recognize you and give you something or whatever, some grant money or something, that means that you're as recognized? Right? Enslaving people? Right? You guys talking about Judah. Right? So, comes back again to this homo book. Right? So this homo book, these guys are saying, how come we're not using the homo book? You know what I mean? Like, it's scripture. Right? And then they use the example of one of the Moors out here, Savage Intellect, MC. Right? So this MC has a video right where they're rhyming you know what i mean and there's a more in the picture in, in the video because he got a fez on and then everybody has like their face covered you know what i mean it looks like the you know the scene is you know moorish if you will you know what i mean savage savage until like he usually has his you know right raps and all that so when when the video is playing there's a brother standing there, you know, you can't see who he is, right? And he's holding a book. That's the Bible. So these these GMS um, great milling stone or whatever these guys reckon, right? Are talking about why is Kudro or not even Kudro. Why is Canaan Land Moors saying whatever, whatever about the Bible and the homo or whatever when there's a Moor in the video holding the, the Bible, right? So the Moor in the video, right? Just so you know, the reason why everybody was masked up wasn't because of some Moorish theme of some video. The reason everybody was masked up because it was minus 30 that day. And <laughs> these guys were shooting the video. And it was minus 30. That's why the brother with the North Face vest, his whole video dance is his hands in his pockets. Because it was minus 30 outside. And Savage is like, did serious to help be holding the mic for so long in minus 30. Outside, no gloves, right? But that's, that's why, that's why, that's why he, he reps. Right? Giddy life, right? Because the giddy life is like the, you know, that's not the life. But, you know, if you have to live that life, you learn from it, right? So his hands weren't even feeling cold. So if you're going to talk about savage intellect, you better be able to put the CD up that you got the CD. And oh, yeah, let's just, just give him his plug, right? Make sure you go check it out because that's Canaan Land Moore Shepard. And the brother who was holding the Bible. Right, what he reps is at the end of the video that these jokers didn't even wait till the end of the video to see him pop his shirt. Why did he pop his shirt? Because on his shirt was the Lion of Judah. Right now, we just said we just read read about the Lion of Judah, right? Descendants of Shem and the New York stock and all that, right. Okay, so you're going to go on YouTube, right? You're going to go on YouTube, Moorish Zionist Temple, and you're going to see a brother. You're going to see a brother that is a Jew or a Hebrew Israelite. 
And he has in the background the Lion of Judah to represent what Judah represents, right? And he ain't calling himself no Hebrew Israelite. He's a Moorish Jew, right? And then he has the Moroccan flag in the back, and then he has the Amity banner that people always say is the American flag. Why do you guys fly the American flag and the Moroccan flag? That's not American flag. The American flag is the Moroccan flag. The red stars and stripes banner is the amity of banner of commerce so that the Europeans could come here and chill if they decide to be lawful, right? But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the fact that here's somebody who is Hebrew-Israelite that's repping, has his office wherever he's at set up just like the temple and it's on the video so people can see that the Moorish Zionist temple is a replica or a duplicate or a parallel of the Moorish Zionist temple of America. Why? Because just like Brother Taj Tariq Bey says, not Taj Tariq El Bey, let me just correct you because his name is Taj Tariq Bey, a little Taj Tariq El Bey that did no videos talking about more, right? That's how, like, either, either y'all aren't reading whatever you're seeing or you're just purposely making up stuff, right? So here's your boy, Morris Zionist Jew, repping the Moroccan flag and knows that he's a Moor and talks like how Moors talk. You're not talking like some reading no, no Bible, referencing no Matthew and Mark and whatever like that. Who are you referencing Matthew and Mark? What are you talking about? You referencing Matthew and Mark? Really? That's the reference that you're going to use. Matthew and Mark. And Exodus and, 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 and all of this. Remember, you have the, the how much of hundreds of letters or whatever that he wrote to his lovers. And that's the guy's book. And then you guys are going to talk shit about gay people. And, 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 you know, they're the sodomites and whatever like that. Right? Joker. That's, that's all it is. That's all it is. Don't let these clowns distract you from your birthright. Because right now, it is on right now. We don't understand how on it is because they're not Moors. <laughs> so they don't even know what the hell's going on. It's seriously on right now. Right? Um, now, just to clear up, Morocco. Morocco. Country in Northwest Africa. Right? Country in Northwest Africa. Moors teach that this is Africa. Okay? Go research and you go find out that that's real. That Africa's over here. Right? And over there is Asia. Asia North, Asia South. Right? So Morocco is in North Africa. And then if over here is Africa and we're in the North, then here's where Morocco is. So everybody knew that. Morocco, and then you start going over across the Atlantic and all that. Stop, please. Right? Please stop. Right? Morocco. Maghrib Al-Aqsa, extreme west. French, Maroc. German, Morocco. M-A-R-O-K-K-O. -K -K right? Moorish. For all the jokers with the ish. Why are you with the ish and the more? makes it an adjective moorish of or pertaining to more from more noun and ish adjective so ish is the adjective not more ish so please stop it with the moorish right the moorish is the adjective ish is the adjective more right Because another one, right? Once again, once again, using their little Bible 
verses, whatever, as references for something, right? Now, came up, one of the things that came up is, oh, well, you know, my, who made me? My mom. That's who my God is. I don't know about you, my God's mom. Right? That's who made me. A lot. Oh, well, well, uh, how do you know your foremothers and forefathers? Because I have a tattoo on my arm. I my mom and my dad's name. What's the problem? That's how I honor my ancestors. And, you know, they were the vessel for me to come here, so here I am. Right? Oh, no, I can't do that. Why can't I do that? Oh, Leviticus says, and Levi Leviticus. Hey, Leviticus. You know, I don't eat pork because of Leviticus. You eat pork because pork. Look at it. You're going to eat that? You eat everything. Simple, you don't eat that. Right? Simple. We have teeth for herbivores. If you have teeth like canine, then <laughs> don't be mad at the cow and the chicken and stuff like that. Not their fault, right? It ain't their fault. While it is true that tattoos have been considered completely forbidden, regardless of intent, for nearly 1,000 years, there are at least 2,000 years of Jewish life and culture that did not completely ban tattoos, as well as a fairly significant period of time between the two opposing viewpoints where the meaning and effect of Leviticus 1928 was rigorously debated, an argument that continues to this day. It has even been suggested by a number of archaeologists that ancient Jews practiced tattooing themselves within a Jewish framework and completely free of the taint of idolatry. So don't, don't even try to talk about Jewish or we're talking about the Europeans. No, they clearly said ancient Jews. So they're talking about ancient Jews, they're talking about what you guys, GMS and, you know, IS whatever, and all you Hebrews are like, guys, right? That's what they're talking about, right? And so the question is not, or never has been, what the original intent of the ban was, but rather, what we should do with it today. Torah is never irrelevant. It was given to us in timeless language that grows and stretches with our increasing generations. We will never need to set aside as each generation builds on the understanding of the last, finding new meaning and new interpretation. In this age, as in all of the ages that came before, we have to ask, what does this mean for us? If a person, if a person finds meaning in a tattoo of a Magadan David or Hamza or depiction of the Kato, should we forbid them to have that mark placed on their body? In our zealous eagerness to prohibit all tattoos, an attempt to ensure the greatest level of piety and confirmation was the laws of the Torah. We, we may have lost sight of our original mitzvah to simply not tattoo as idol worship in order to foster a strong, lasting Jewish identity. In the process of increasing our piety and strengthening the possible meanings of the mitzvah, we may have prevented others from expressing their Jewish identities in a way that was acceptable for the majority of the Jewish history, tattooing. We, can we justify prohibiting this practice and given Judaism struggle with identity and pride in the face of assimilation in the diaspora, should we? Which leads right into Pan-African because, you know, the other thing that came up is, you know, they like to go through the classes and nitpick at little stuff. You know, this is how, this is how these jokers do, right? So, they, they like to nitpick at stuff. So, what they're nitpicking at is, um, there was a class that I did where, you know, somebody brought up Pan-African and I said, Yo, you know, that's a fraud because, you know, Pan is something in the kitchen and <laughs> that has nothing to do with it, right? So, you know, you're mad. Nah, Pan has to do with, you know, all the African nations and whatever, blah, 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 you know. So, okay, cool. All the African nations, right? Yeah. So, Pan-African. 
As a philosophy, Pan-Africanism represents the aggregation of the historical, cultural, spiritual, artistic, scientific, and philosophical, philosoph philosophical legacies of African from past times to the present. Pan-Africanism as an ethical system traces its origin from ancient times and promotes values that are the product of African civilization and the struggle against slavery, racism, colonialism, and neocolonialism. Alongside a large number of slave insurrections by the end of the 18th century, a political movement developed across the Americas, Europe, and Africa that sought to weld these desperate, disparate movements into a network of solidarity, putting an end to this oppression. In London, the Sons of Africa was a political group addressed by Kobna, Otoba, Kogoano, Q-U-O-B-N-A, O-T-T-O-B-A-H, C-U-G, O-A-N-O. -O. In 1971 edition of his book, Thoughts and Sentiments of the Evil of Slavery, the group addressed meetings and organized letter-writing campaigns, published campaigning material, and visited Parliament. They wrote to figures such as Granville Sharp, William Pitt, and other members of the white abolition movement, as well as King George III and the Prince of Wales, the future George the Fourth, George the Sixth, George the Fourth. Modern Pan-Africanism began around the beginning of the 20th century. The African Association, later renamed the Pan-African Association, was established around 1897 by Henry Sylvester Williams, who organized the first Pan-African Conference in London in 1900. In the United States, the term is closely associated with Afrocentrism, an ideology of African-American identity politics that emerged during the civil rights movement of the 1960s to 70s. As originally conceived by Henry Sylvester Williams, that some history books credit this idea to Edward Wilman, Wilmot Blyden, Pan-Africanism referred to the unity of all continental Africa. Henry Sylvester Williams was a Trinidadian lawyer counselor and writer, most noted for his involvement in the Pan-African movement. As a young man, he went to North America to further his education and subsequently to Britain, where in 1897, he formed an African association to challenge paternalism, racism, and imperialism. The association aimed to promote and protect the interests of all subjects claiming African descent, wholly or in part in British colonies and other place, especially Africa, but circulating accurate information on all subjects affecting their rights and privileges as subjects of the British Empire by direct appeals to the imperial and local government. In 1900s, Williams organized the Pan-African Conference held in Westminster Hall in London. In 1903, he went to practice as a barrister in South Africa, becoming the first black man to be called to the bar in the Cape Colony. Right? So, with that alone, as far as Pan Africanism goes, or Pan African, or whatever, um, they want to wreck. Right? It's not the identity of the people, it's a concept. So, the concept is based on people who have a nationality. It's not based on stateless people who say, yeah, I'm of African descent. We're Africa. I'm African. <laughs> what do you mean you're African? We're Africa. I'm African. You can't be African. You have to be from somewhere over there because people over there realize and recognize and know what nationality is and they're claiming that. They're not claiming that they're African. Right? And the individuals who are claiming to be African, right, that are from 
across the Atlantic, they're only claiming to be African so they can be close to you. Because they realize that you're not using what you got up here. Because up here is your birthright. But you don't want that. You want to go drive hours or whatever to go fight colonizers, right? With some quote unquote Indian. And if I ask them, are you Indian? They'll say, yeah. And they'll be like, yeah, I'm Indian. And they'll show me something. <laughs> so even in their fraud, they got something to show that they're a fraud. Right? And then y'all running up like, it's like, you know, you're going to talk about you guys study or whatever. Do you have a copy of King Alpha Plan? If you don't have a copy of King Alpha Plan, you don't study. If you never looked up King Alpha Plan and don't know what that is, you definitely don't study. Because King Alpha Plan is for all you so-called people, you, I hear y'all in your videos, you know, the black people and, you know, black people need to, black people need to. Right? Calling people black, you're putting them in slavery. And Noble Drawley warned us of that. You know, the guy who we quote unquote, you know, believe or whatever. You know, we study what he brought. And we recognize that what he brought is real. Right? So you're going to go find your boys. Right? Make sure you go check your boys' website. Right? Temple of the Most High, Moorish Jews website. So these are guys, the Hebrew Israelites, right? Jews. Okay? They're Jews. Remember, you had in your video, you kept popping up the picture of the Moorish Jews of Harlem. The Moorish Jews of Harlem. You kept showing the picture. So how are you claiming to be Hebrew Israelite? And then there's, a, there's people who... Are saying that they're Moors, right? And then you're showing their picture, but you can't you can't see that they're Jews and they're calling themselves Moors? You can't see that they're Hebrew Israelites and they're calling themselves Moors? Right? This is for all you Hebrew Israelite fakers. Because the only real Hebrew Israelites are the ones that call themselves Moors. Those are the only real ones. The only real Jews are the ones that call themselves Moors. If more is not attached to whatever you call yourself, you're a fraud. <clears throat> you can tell them Kudro said so. Make sure. Don't forget. Right? The temple <clears throat> of the Most High Moorish Jews website. These are the Moorish Jews now. Right? Seven point principles of awareness. Right? Listen very closely, GMS and all you other so-called Hebrew Israelites that don't want to be more, but you want to be Hebrew Israelites. But you don't want to be Canaanites, but you want to be Hebrew Israelites. And you don't want to be Hittites, but you want to be Hebrew Israelites. And you don't want to recognize, you know, the cursed seed, but you just want to represent the good seed when all, all of us are the same family. <laughs> right? You guys are playing around. One, the true nationality of the said black man and woman that inhabit the said continent of North America by tribal descent, and in fact, the tribe of Judah, as recorded in scripture of the lost sheep of the house of Israel, who are descendants of the Moorish Empire. This is Hebrew Jew talking. The condition two, the condition of the said black man in the result of karmic debt of our transgressions, of natural law, right? That's just to answer your dumb question about, you know, well, are you saying that if black people start calling themselves Moors, all the natural disasters would stop? Let's just read your Hebrew Israelite Moorish brother, right? From the Temple of the Most High Moorish Jews website. And see what he says with regard to that, right? The condition, so the condition means the crap that they're in, right? Of the said black man 
is the result of karmic debt. Right? Karmic debt. For our transgressions of natural law. Natural law, which is earthquakes and all that stuff. Right? On top of that, on top of that, right? When when you start playing around in nature, naturally, naturally, we're more. That's natural. That's what we are naturally, organically. We're Mars, no GMO, right? No pesticides, right? If you're saying that you're not that, remember this is your this is your Moorish Jew brothers talking to you that you you know you're not gonna bring them up. You're not gonna diss them, right? But you're gonna diss Kudro. Make sure you also go read Divine Warning by the Prophet where he tells you. Where he also brings up the fact that because we violated natural law, right? There's all these stuff going on on the planet. And we don't want to recognize that we're the problem. And the only way that we fix the problem is to first fix your mind state. Because everything that happens on the earth plane happens because of the body. And... The mind state that's out there right now is cut down all the trees, build up apartment buildings, build up condos, build up 50 foot whatever. Cut down trees, try it, let's build something to the moon or whatever like that. Okay. Three, the male female relationship and its repair is key <coughs> in resurrecting the spiritual dead black sheep. Four, before 1611, we were rulers of the earth from Central Europe for greater than a thousand years in Russia, Asia, Scotland, Ireland, England, Spain, Sicily, later to inhabit the lands of Morocco, Mauritania, Tunis, Algiers, and Niger. Five, reason, science, logic, law, history, mathematics, and metaphysics are the seven master tools of building civilization. This is your boy, brother. Reason, science, logic, law, history, mathematics, and metaphysics are seven master tools for building civilization. Six, that we do not truly know history if we do not know law. We do not truly know scripture if we do not know law. We do not truly know law or history if we do not know scripture and these three would be as one. So either bring it all out or don't bring anything out because we're not about secrets. We're telling you <laughs> that the temple of the Moorish High the most high Moorish Jews, right, are laying it all out. Why? Because they're Moors. And they're not going to hide nothing. They're going to say what has to be said. Because they're Moors. Because that's all Moors do. Right? You know, you're not going to hide. You're going to stand there with the two flags, just like the Morris Science Temple of America, to show you that there is unity. That you guys are playing around. But you want unity. There's unity. Say that you're Morris. Just say that you're Morris and there's unity. You want to be black? Cool. Say that you're black or Morris. And then I'll say black power. Right? That's what, that's what it's going to take. Nothing else will suffice. Have to. Have to have mores there. If you don't have mores there, whatever you're saying is void. Sorry, but we can't really, can't really deal with you. 
Because your status is dead. What are we going to do with you to do what? Have a dead status with you? Nothing personal. That's what it is. Because you have no law. If you know law, you know the scriptures. If you know scriptures, you know law. Right? And remember, history is in there. Seven, we are the original inhabitants of earth, the aboriginal people of the land, the master builders of civilization, and the mothers and fathers of man and mankind alike. That's why we say everybody's moral. Some are amalgamated, some are Christian, some, you know, just don't want to be what they're supposed to be. They want to be everything else. It is what it is. But the reality is that the Hebrews, the Israelites, the Jews are more. That's the point, right? That's what the point is, okay? You're also going to go see House of Yosef, Moorish Jews, right? And their website is moorishisrael.webs.com. Right, so Moorish Israel. So I'll rep these these Hebrews right here. I'll rep these Hebrews because these Hebrews know us up. These Hebrews know us up. So I would rep them, and I'll pump their website, MoorishIsrael.webs.com. Make sure you go to their website. Make sure you support them. Because they're more, and they're not hiding in the back, right? Coming out, you know, dressing up or whatever, and then you ask them their identity, and they can't give you a nationality card that says Hebrew Israelite is their nationality. I know these Moors can, because, you know, they got a nationality. They have a national standard on their website. Right? <laughs> right? These are the these are the Hebrew Israelites. How come he, how come these Hebrew Israelites can have a Moroccan flag, right? And rep that. And rep it like, you know what I mean? Moors would rep it. Because there's unity. And all you Trumps pushing for separation because you don't want to call yourself Moors, stay in your lane. Because we're about more. Because there's Hebrews out there that are down with more science. So there's unity. There's Rastafarians out there that are down with more science. Right? There's Nation of Islam that they tell me Islam when I greet them. Assalamualaikum and all that. Islam. Because they know us up. There's Nation of Gods and Earths that when I see them, they tell me Islam. Well, you know what I mean? And I'm going to tell them, peace God. Because there's unity. And these jokers who don't want unity, when you have this up here, on a website, and it's people that you could contact, and they say that they're Moors, and Israel is Moorish Israel to them, and Moorish Torah, and Moorish everything, please, please stop. You need to go get Savage CD. Stop playing around. In the Americas, the Ephraimites, Mandingo Moors, divided into several tribes which included the Mandan, the Natik, and the Nantico. In this regard, a Moravian missionary visited the Nantico nation on Maryland's eastern shore to compile a vocabulary of their language and found they were speaking pure African Mandingo, Crispus Attox. C-R-I-S-P-U-S-A-T-T-U-C-K-S. -T -T a Moorish Natik was the first to be killed during the Boston Massacre. The Ephraimite Moors were also known as the original Black Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek, and Seminole Indians. Some members of the Bafour Bafar Ephraimite Moors migrated from Mali and ultimately settled in Nigeria 
where they became known as the Biafran, B-I-A-F-R-A-N-S. The Moorish Ephraimite Biafran became the leaders of the Thelegbo Israelite nation, which was symbolized by the wearing of the traditional red fez, which is customarily worn by Igbo chiefs. In 1993, an Igbo by the name of Chima, C-H-I-M-A, from the Imo state in Nigeria, petitioned the Israeli rabbinate for recognition of the Igbo as members of the tribe of Ephraim. Rudolf Windsor, the author from Babylon, Babylon to Timbuktu, writes about the Ephraimites of Mali and Morocco settling in the Yoruba land where they became known to their neighbors as Imo Yokuin, meaning the strange people. However, they refer to themselves as the Ben Ephraim. The majority of captives taken to the Americas during the transatlantic slave trade were descended from the greater Igbo nation of Biafra, and therefore were under the authority of the tribe of Ephraim and the house of Joseph. Both the descendants of Ephraim Moors who arrived in the Americas before Columbus and those who came during the slave trade are the inheritors of the western lands promised to the children of Israel by courtesy of Amir Ishaq D. Al-Sulimani. S-U-L-A-I-M-A-N-I. Right. World's best kept lesson. Morris Zion Temple. And what are they repping? What do they got on the board there? Right? What do they got on the board? This is the Moorish Zionist Jews. And on the board, they got the Great Seal. So that means they rep that. And they got the Moroccan flag, which means they rep that. Which means that they're Moors. Once again, I don't know who y'all learning from, who you're teaching, but you need to come down to the temple and get some lessons. Because... Y'all don't got it, right? And there's another picture, right, of the elder, Elder Herman. And there's the sign, the Moorish Zionist temple of the Moorish Jews, right? The Moorish Zionist temple of the Moorish Jews. So you can front, you can front, right? You can front. Like you're not Moors and play the game that you're not Moors, but the reality is what your fronting is doing this is what your fronting is doing, right? For all you um, so called Hebrews, whatever that want to rep Hebrew as your stuff, right? And not rep Moors when you're Moors. The Jews of Dagestan, D-A-G-H-E-S-T-A-N, live isolated and in one of the most remote impenetrable areas in the world for many centuries. They have been historically known for their fierce and warlike nature. In dress and custom, they were hardly distinguishable from other Caucasian fighting people in the region. Though they are considered Dimi, D H. I-M-M-I, -M -M by their surrounding Muslim population, the mountain Jews owned land and were known to be fierce, not hesitating to defend, by sword or the rifle, their family, religion, or personal dignity. The Jews of Dagestan greatly resemble the other warlike inhabitants of this mountainous region, and they have acquired the virtues as well as faults of the latter. There is a tradition among the Jews of Dagestan that they are descendants of the lost ten tribes, but the history of their wanderings is now forgotten. The written documents which they once possessed, having in the course of time been either lost or destroyed, they differ from their Christian and Mohammedan neighbors in speech, using the Tat language, which is a combination of Persian and Hebrew. Their writing is a mixture of square characters and Rashi. They wear the circus and dress and always go heavily armed even sleeping without removing their weapons, right? So because you guys don't want to rep your stuff, they're going to rep your stuff for you, right? 
So the Dagestans are going to rep your stuff until you pick it up. When you guys stop playing around, then they're going to go back to their mountainous region and be whoever they're supposed to be. Until then, they're in your land, so-called Israel. They claim is yours and all that, you know, right? So you go back home and all that type of stuff. But remember, you guys say you came over here. So if you came over here, somebody brought you over here, then people over there have your stuff and they're parading around in your stuff at, in your place, right? And I'm not denying that, you know, Moors aren't Hebrews and Hebrews aren't Moors. They're the same people. But, you know, my stock of Moors, we've been in the Americas. We ain't know nothing about no Israel anywhere. You know, that's ancestors, right? And nothing to do with us. We just honor them because they're the ancestors. So if you guys want, say that you're Moors and go get your stuff. You know? Right? Didn't, didn't Ben Amin try a thing? Right? Why did he try a thing? You think he's going to go over there, talk about his Hebrew, Hebrew is like? Right? That ain't what it's about. It's not what it's about. And this was just something that, you know, just found out there. So we just put that up. You know, Moorish King of Croatia. So, you know, turbans up. Because you don't play. Right? Um, we got to put on the record, um, Arnold, Hosea Ford, right? These are the Moorish Jews. Right, and you know, you know Moorish because it's turban, right? And then you can see the fez tassel sticking out right there. Okay, so you already know that it's Moorish, right? It's not some Hebrew Israelite guy, right? So, you know, you know, they went to Ethiopia, participated in the coronation of his Imperial Majesty in 1930, right? Like they were, they were there. The Moorish Jews were there. Why not? You get the triple crown. Triple crown is a fed. Jewish fed. But remember, he's a lion of Judah. Right? I knew about that Christian. But Christian and Judaism is the same thing. That's why you wear the whole of the homo stuff. But you don't want to admit that it's the same thing. You to pretend like, you know. Judaism isn't Christianity. You know. So we have it all figured out. Because you abandoned your birthright, right? The rabbis are taking your place in Morocco. Right? There's the rabbis taking your place in Morocco. Right? The rabbis wearing your fez. Because remember, they're the Ashkenazi from Germany. What are they doing dressing up in you guys' stuff? You guys are the Hebrews, the Hebrew Israelites. So why don't you claim your claim your birthright instead of playing around? Look at them parading around in your birthright. Right? Yeah, you too, Hebrew Israelite sisters. Don't think we ain't left y'all out. You know, claim your birthright because they're parading around with your stuff too. Right? They're parading around with your stuff too. So don't get it twisted. Please don't get it twisted. You know, you're not bashing nobody. It's telling you that the European Ashkenazi, who you guys keep talking about, they're the fraud and they're not the real Jews or whatever, they're stealing your birthright because you don't want it. You want to be Hebrew Israelites instead of being Moorish Jews. Right? Once again, in Fez, right? And keep in mind, keep in mind, because I know what you're going to say. Well, look, in Morocco, they have Europeans there. Why don't you go claim your stuff? No, I'm in Morocco right now. And you don't have to tell me you go claim nothing because, you know, they recognize Moorish nationality card, tax exempt. So don't even play around because we got IDs out here to say that we're the real Moroccans, not the fakers that are in this picture with the fake guys who steal in your birthright, right? And parading around with your birthright. 
because you guys don't want you want to claim some other stuff right you know and then they even said you know what we're going to try to hide it from them right the missing effect m-i-s-n-e-f-e-t right this is the the high priest fed <laughs> right so they got the high priest fed okay they got the high priest fed there's your boys there's your boys parading around with your stuff you know what i mean right parading around with your stuff because you don't want to be Moorish Jew. you want to be hebrew israelite like you can be a language like you can be a faith right and if you're israelite you could be you should be saying that you're israelite american if you're israelite because you're in america you're not israel right now what are you talking about you're israelite and that's it if italian comes here he has to be italian and american the only people here that are indigenous are moors and that's it which includes tribal people that are called Mexicans or Brazilians and, you know, Chileans and all that, right? With tribal names that they attach to land and then say, oh yeah, you know, that's, that's country. <laughs> no, it's a tribal name, right? This is going to stop the neo-Nazis. So you guys talking about, oh, you think the nationality guys are going to stop you, and neo-Nazis? How come you guys sound scared? And then, that's another thing too. How come you got a video, making videos and stuff like that? You know, when you are in a car, driving to wherever, you know what I mean? Bunning it down, right? Coughing in your videos and stuff like that, bunning, right? Going to some reserve to go help indians go do stuff how come you're not talking loud like that when you're doing videos again you know with unanswered questions and stuff what, what, what's what gives because you should be you should have some conviction you know if, that, if that's what you're standing on you know you should be able to be saying that because that's where you're standing on. If you're not standing on that, then, you know, stay in your lane, like we've been telling you. So, this is not even anything. Like I said for the beginning, just chilling, figured let me make a video for you guys. So as long as all the mores, keep it strong. Continue to study, 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 because you know that's what we do. That's all we do, right? Ain't nothing else to do <laughs> but study, right? Islam to all the more worldwide. Islam to all the more that see this. Islam to all the Hebrew Moors, the Jewish Moors, the Moorish Jews, the Hebrew Israelite Moors, the Moorish Israel Jews, and all the other Moorish zionist temple jewish moors that recognize their birthright recognize that they're moors recognize that you can still rep torah and everything else that you want to rep just attach more to it right and you know what i mean we, we will that you moors that are jewish and hebrew israelite continue to put up the work so that people can see that there's unity and that Moors aren't crazy people that are just talking crazy. Moors are about uplifting fall humanity and unifying the Asiatic nations again into the empire that we used to be so we can continue the legacy of our ancient foremothers and forefathers. So until Sunday, Islam Moors, peace, love, and hotel.